Alright guys, so we're on lesson 4 or 5, which is arrays and partial products for two digit by two digit numbers, multiplication. So starting with number 1, we have this problem right here. It says, in the example on the previous page, what four simpler multiplication problems were used to find 24 times 13? Well, if you remember, we had broken it up and we had done 20 times 10 because we're multiplying by those place values. Oops, I gave the answer. 20 times 10. We had done 20 times the one place value, which is 20 times 3. We had also done 4 times 10. And we had done 4 times 3. Now it doesn't tell us to solve them, so we're going to leave it just like that. But if we solve them and add all those partial products together, we would see that we would get the same answer that we did on the previous page in that visual learning. So question number two says, how can you use properties of operations to find the product of 24 times 13? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use place value to break apart the factors and add. So that's what I'm going to write. Use place value to break apart the factors add. So now what do I have? Well I'm going to do 24 times 13 and I'm going to remember break apart those place values. So 24 is going to be broken up into 20 plus 4 and 13 is going to be broken up into 10 plus 3. So notice it's the exact same and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this 10 to everything inside and I'm also going to distribute that 3 to everything inside. So what do we have here? Well, we would have 20 times 10, and I can also distribute that 20 to everything that way as well. Plus 20 times 3, so notice I'm distributing it. Plus, now I distribute that 4, 4 times 10. Plus. 4 times 3. And then what do I get when I add all those up? Well, what I will have is 20 plus 60 plus 40 plus 12. 200 plus 60 plus 40 plus 12. And then when I add them all up, what do I get? I'll get 312. So it's a lot of work. That's why I use these models because it's really going to show us what's going on. So let's look. For number three, use the array drawn on a grid to find the product. Check if your answer is reasonable. Well here, notice I have 24, so there's 20 blocks right here. This red part, there's 20 blocks. And this four is right down here. Notice how 20 plus four equals 24, and there's four blocks right there. So that means this top part, this pink one, it's 10 across, and the 10 here, and six across right here. So now we can either count up all of these dots or you can remember this is an area model where we do length times width. So I'm going to do my length 10 times 20. This is 200. Next, 20 times 6, or 6 times 20, is 120. 4 times 10 is 40. And this last one I'm not going to be able to fit, so I'm just going to draw an arrow right here. That is 6 times 4, which is equal to 24. Now what do I do? I have all of these pieces, one, two, three, four pieces, because notice there's one, two, three, four place values, and I add them up. 200 plus 120 plus 40 plus 24, what is that? That's 384. Now, it says check if your answer is reasonable. Well, let's check. Using estimation, this is close to 20. This is close to 20. 20 times 20 is 400. Is 400 close to 384? Yes, it is. So we can go on to our next one. Let me fold this in half for us. And now problem number four. Use the array drawn on a grid to find each product. So what do we have here? Well, here we have 10 times 4. Remember, this is 10. This is 4 from 14. This one is 20 long. And this one is 1 long. So now let's fill this out. We have 10 times 20, 
is 200. We have 4 times 20, because notice how it's 20 long here, because it's the same length as that up there. That is 80. Then this one is tiny, it's 1 times 10, which is equal to 10. This one is even tinier, it's 1 times 4, which is equal to 4. Remember, if we're ever unsure how long it is, we can always count those blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what do we do? We add them all up. 200 plus 80 plus 10 plus 4 is 294. Okay, heading off to number 5. This is a length of 10. This is a length of 4. This right here is a length of 10. This right here is a length of 2. Notice, 10 plus 2 equals 12. So that's where my numbers are coming from. 10 plus 4 equals 14. 10 times 10 is 100. This one, 2 times 10 is 20. This one right here, it's 2 long times 4 high is 8. And this last one right here is 10 times 4, which equals 40. So now we can add all those up. We have 100 plus 40 plus 20 plus 8. When we add them all up, we get 168. And I'm just going to drop box just so it shows us all part of that. I should have made my work a little bit neater. Okay, this next one. This is 10 and 8 for 18, and the other one is the exact same, 10 and 8. Now, I'm not going to write my multiplication here. I'm just going to multiply these numbers and write them. 10 times 10 is 800. 10 times 8 is 8. Remember, this is 10 long right here. My next one, this is 10 by 8, which is 80. And my last one, this is 8 times 8, which is 64. So let's add them up. 100 plus 80 plus 80 plus 64. For 16, 16 plus 6 is 22. So I regroup that 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So my answer is 324. That is what 18 times 18 is. Okay, my last one, 15 times 13. This is 10, this is 3, because there's three rows. This one is 10, this one's 5. And from that 15, remember, 10 plus 5 is 15. Now what do we have? 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 5 is 50. 3 times 10 is 30. And my last one, 3 times 5 is 15. So I have 100 plus 50 plus 30 plus 15. So this is 8 plus 1 is 9. So my answer is 195 for 15 times 13. So I think we got the hang of it. So let's go to our next page on the back. The flagpole in front of City Hall in Lewis Town is 35 feet tall. How many inches tall is the flagpole? Remember, there are 12 inches in the foot. Well, this is telling me I have 35 groups. And how big is each group? How big is each foot? It's 12. So that's a multiplication problem. So I have 35 times 12. Now, we could do it the standard way, which is the way your parents would probably not do it. But we're focusing on arrays and partial product. So let's draw that array. And I have one two place values, so that's going to be a 30 and a 5 for two place values. And I have one two place values, so I'm also going to break this up into two place values of 10 and 2. Now what we get, 10 times 30 is 300, 5 times 10, remember it's the same length as this, is 50. 30, because remember this length is the same as the top, so 30 times 2 is 60. The last one, 5 times 2 is 10. So now what I do, I add those all up. 300 plus 50 plus 60 plus 10. Well, that equals 420 inches. Now for number 9. Use associative or commutative. Remember, commutative means we can change the order. So our commutative property, if you remember, was 5 times 2 equals 2 times 5. The blank property multiplication states you can change the grouping of factors and the product stays the same. Well, since it's not commutative because it's not saying we're changing the order of them, it's just changing the grouping. Grouping is our associate. What that's saying is this, we can do 
3 times 5 times 2 is the same as changing that Greek unit, doing 3 times 5 first times 2. So it's really just changing the parentheses versus changing the order. Now, for number 10, we're going to use this wonderful balloon popping diagram over here. Maggie is making a balloon game for the school fair. Students throw darts to pop the balloons. Draw lines on the array to separate each factor into tens and ones. How many balloons are used to set up the game? Well, here, we have 13 down and 14 across, and that looks like an array to me already. So it looks like it's 10 times 13. I'm sorry, 13 times 14, but it's actually not so funny to do that. It's saying draw lines to separate. So I need to draw and separate into 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. So I'm going to use, let's see, where's a good color marker? I guess we're using orange today. So I'm going to break this up into a group of 10. Notice how there's 10 here, 4 here, and here I need to break it up into 10 and 3 as well. So I could do 1, 2, 3. And now notice I have 10 here, 4 here, 10 here, and 3 here. And it's just like my partial product that we've been working with. So let's continue. We have how many balloons are used in the setup? Well, we have 10 times 10 is 100. We have 10 times 4 is 40. We have 10 times 3 is 30. And we have 4 times 3 is 12. So let's add all those up. We have 100 plus 80 plus 30 plus 12. So what does that equal for us? Well, that equals 182. And I'm going to put my label on because I'm not the best that remember that label, but I should. 182 balloons. Now, question number 11 says, Maggie knows that she'll have to completely refill the balloon board 15 times. Write an equation to show the number of balloons Maggie will need. So, we have what? We have 13 times 14. Because that's for one board, but she has to do this 15 times. So that means we need to multiply this by 15. Now, it doesn't say to solve, but it does have this problem of write an equation. So, I don't need to solve it, but I do need to make an equation. So I need that equal sign. Remember equation, my base word is equal. And what do I want to make it equal to? Well, I'm just going to put B, B being that mystery number, and I pick B because that's going to stand for balloons. So, that's how I would go about writing an equation if she needs to fill it 15 times. Now, you could have done something else if you wanted to because I really don't like how they phrase this. Since it says about, you could have actually put like 14, 16, a number that's close to 15. So, but... That's for another day. Number 12 now. We have two more. Write to explain why the product of 15 times 32 is equal to the sum of 10 times 32 and 5 times 32. Well, before I even write, I notice 10 and 5 is equal to 15. That's kind of what I've been doing this whole time. So let's start there. We're going to say 15 can be broken. into 10, and what? Into 10 plus 5. And then what do I know about that? So, 15 times 32 can be what? Well, it can equal 10 times 32 plus 5 times 32. Now, it's not, again, asking me to solve. It just wants me to explain why they are the same. So, I'm actually done with that explanation. So now, number 13 says what? It says a theater contains 17 rows and 14 seats in each row. Draw an array to find the number of seats in the theater. Separate each factor until it tens and ones in the array. So, first I need to draw an array. Before I even go any further, that's what I noticed right here. Draw an array. And I see there's two place values up top for 17, so I'm going to split up into two place values. One is the tens place value, one is the sevens place value. My next I see is 14, so I'm going to break it up on the side into two place values of 10 and 4. Now, 
what do I do next? Well, it's actually done. Because it doesn't actually say to solve. But, you know what we should do? We should solve it. So we're going to do 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 7 is 70. 10 times 4 is 40. And 7 times 4 is 28. So now I would just add those guys up. 100 plus 70 plus 40 plus 28. And you get 8. That's 11. Plus 2 is 13. Regroup. So what is it? It's 238 seats. I'll put that circle around. So that is it for partial products and arrays. Just remember, you're drawing a box, and then you're breaking that box into how many place values you have. So if I have one, two, three, four total place values, then I should have four total boxes. Good job, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.